All right, so hi everyone, I'm Liam. I'm from Oracle and I'm here to talk about the maple tree. I've um, been doing this for a project for a few years. But, um, just wanted to go over an overview if you haven't seen any of the talks before. This is a self-balancing bee tree variant. Uh, the nodes are 256 bytes or four cache lines. Can operate in RCU safe mode uh, and it supports bulk loading. Uh, initially it was designed to track the VMAs uh, because the VMA changes were pretty messy uh, with multiple data structures. Um, the tree itself supports multiple nodes, uh, branching factors of 10 or 16. Uh, other node types are planned. So uh, why use the maple tree? Well, the number one reason is it's easy to use. There's uh, no need to write your own search function. It's fast, I was able to remove the VMA cache structure uh, and maintain the same performance. Uh, you also use it for non-overlapping data. We don't support overlapping data. So it stores ranges internally uh, with a size of one supported, so a singleton. Uh, I also support pre-allocation. Uh, only nulls are combined into the uh, same entry and uh, on the pre-allocation currently, it's uh, assuming the worst case scenario, so you'll always have space. Uh, the raison d'etre uh, was because um, it's a shift of balance between the CPUs and the, the memory speed. This made it more uh, beneficial to have a more cache efficient uh, data structure. So uh, I went through and looked at some of the most common uh, data structures, and the number one still is the linked list uh, in, the, in the kernel. Uh, also doubly linked lists. It's the most widely used. Uh, it's what's considered an intrusive uh, data structure. That is, you embed it in your own structure. I'm sure most of you know that. Uh, so when you think about searching, you're going from the previous to the next. Uh, you're pulling your whole structure into cache. Uh, just to find the element you want. Um, so there's also the RB tree, which is what the, uh, the, the VMAs use currently in mainline. Um, so the RB tree is also intrusive. You embed your nodes. Um, so it kind of suffers from the same problem as you search for something, you're blowing away your cache. Um, that's not ideal. Um, yeah, it means it, it's, it's also complicated to use. So a lot of people have a bit of an issue using it because you have to write your own search function. So the way that people get around this is they use the interval tree. The interval tree is based on the RB tree, but it has a search function for you. Uh, so it, again, suffers from the same problems. You're searching for something, you're destroying your cache. Um, when people use the RB tree and the interval tree, uh, a lot of people I spoke to about this uh, get around uh, iterating through it by adding a linked list to their structure as well. So you end up with multiple data structures uh, just to have a list of things, which isn't great. What's that? Yeah. Um, and then there's the radix tree, which is a try really in, in the kernel. It's uh, pretty inefficient when it gets uh, sparse data, which will See you later. I'm going the wrong way again. So a little bit of an update on where I am with the tree. Uh, it's, we settled, since 2019's talk, we settled on 256 byte nodes or four cache lines. Uh, Pre-allocation support was there before. It's uh, a lot easier to use now because uh, FS Reclaim made me use it <laughs> for the VMA uh, locking problems. So I have to pre-allocate. Uh, for VMAs. 32-bit uh, is better tested. I ported most of the tests to 32-bit, except for my live capture tests, which I've if deft out. Uh, that's not upstream. That'll be the next thing I send. Um, there's also some internal changes. Uh, what I would call a spanning write, which is a write that spans multiple entries or multiple nodes. Uh, the, the algorithm has been rewritten. And I also added something called a maple state write, which uh, is just a structure to uh, keep track of uh, write, writing to the tree. Um, so 
uh, yesterday, the 11th. Uh, so when I was traveling, uh, AKBM said uh, that it, and the quote is up. Um, it's it's in the Linux MM tree, and it's in Linux Next. So uh, hopefully it gets into mainline soon. So it's pretty exciting. Um, so there are a number of other places besides the VMA that we could use a, a better data structure, as to what I alluded to with the uh, link list comments. Um, the PIDs, for example, uh, right now it's optimized for, the tree is optimized for having uh, ranges, so storing ranges, um, but we could optimize better for singletons. Uh, so there's a few differences between the two, the main one being a cursor where the PIDs need to know where, where it's going to be used next, like your next PID. Um, and for PIDs, you always want to be increasing, uh, but uh, because I'm planning to track the cursor outside of the tree, it can be used pretty much for any, uh, any IDs, so uh, C groups, uh, uh, FDs, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so the gaps are tracked within the maple tree for the VMAs because a lot of the time you want to search uh, for a hole to put your data, but it doesn't have to. Um, and so when you don't track gaps, the branching factor is actually higher at 16, whereas uh, when you're trapping gaps, the internal, the internal branching factors, 10 in the leaf nodes are 16. So we could make a new node type to make this a bit more efficient. Um, so right now the PIDs use the radix tree, but like I said earlier, when you're using the sparse data, it becomes pretty... Uh, comes pretty bad for storing things. Um, the tree is uh, dynamic node types. So basically, we decide what node would best fit the data that's in the node to reduce the number of nodes needed. So you can have uh, leaf nodes of different types. So the idea would be to add something called a sparse node. Uh, sparse nodes are kind of like maps, dictionaries, or associative arrays, basically you have a key value pair. Um, if we do this, we can get 15 entries in each node, undecided if they'll be sorted or not. Uh, so it would become a lot more efficient for singletons in this, uh, with this node type for leaf. Uh, so this is actually a real capture from a laptop. Um, it was running for about two weeks, so the PIDs have been run around a few times. Uh, we captured 521 PIDs, and then we pumped them into the maple, uh, the maple tree and the radix tree, and uh, the results are pretty bad for the, <laughs> for the radix tree. Uh, over, so there's a lot of nodes. Um, over 100, 100, what was it? It was like 110, 115 of the radix tree nodes have a single PID in them. So these nodes uh, in the radix tree are 576 bytes. So that's not a very efficient use of space. I think we can do a little bit better than uh, storing one PID. Uh, so, uh, comparing that to the maple tree, uh, we get a lot of a, a lot higher density in our uh, in our nodes, and this is without changing the node types. So that's still with the range node types. So it's worth noting, though, that because we're constructing this after the fact, uh, the maple tree could either become be more efficient or, or less based because it's a dynamic tree. Uh, the way the radix tree works, uh, it's kind of, well, it's no good with sparse data. So another idea was uh, dense nodes, which is basically uh, just a, an array um, so we can get 31 entries because we have a parent link in our nodes, but the entries, uh, the location, the index is implied by the parent. So if a node starts at, you know, 20, then, uh, index zero is 20, 21, et cetera. Um, so we could get even more dense. Uh, if you look at the distribution of PIDs when you boot your system, 
what, I, what I noticed is you'll have a group of about one to 10 that are always there, and then you'll maybe have short-lived boot tasks, then you'll have another grouping, and then it will be sparse data after that. Uh, once you wrap around, you know, you fill those in, they'll go away, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, can I take them on? Yeah. <laughs> um, I helped. <laughs> so, so I looked into that kind of stuff uh, five years ago or so. And I did a prototype called the. It was an adaptation of Judy re-implementation of Judy arrays in user space in user space RC. And for that kind of thing, so it basically I have dynamically dynamic node size for each power of two size of node for the internal and leaf nodes, which are automatically resized based on the distribution inside. So if you want a pointer, I can show you that code and I'd be interested to see how that would behave because then you get perfect density uh, for even the very sparse distributions. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Um, the one thing about that is every time you put a new PID in, you would have to do some work on your tree. Sorry. No, because... Uh, so there's extra room. So so whenever you have a node size, you can add a remo and remove a, f a few entries. It's when you hit a threshold, either lower or higher than a certain threshold value, and you put an hysteresis in there. So as soon as you, as long as you're within the hysteresis, you don't ch need to change the node size. As you go above, then you take the next representation that you need for that node, and then yes, you allocate copy over and everything. And, but as long as you stay within the hysteresis and you decide that, I mean, that, that's a big, that's a big data structure, very tiny data configuration data structure that describes every node type and the thresholds. So, and I actually did it by hand, calculating how many nodes fit and everything. So, so but please have a look. And I, I think that could do very well for, at least for the PIDs. Yeah, it'd be good to see. Uh, I do the same sort of thing. I have a lower threshold or and a, and a larger threshold, and I split or, or combine uh, based on that. So it'd be interesting to, to look at. Yeah, I, I, I think I think there's definitely some um, interesting things we could do. I, I, I think I think the right way to do this might be to have uh, Judy style nodes as the leaf nodes while leaving the higher level nodes as being uh, the, the, the range nodes that we currently have. So, so, so what's the, the, the memory footprint of the intermediate node compared to the leaf node? I mean, is it off and off or is it mostly leaves or what, what is it? Oh, it's mostly leaves. Oh yeah. Well, uh, assuming we're not, the, the radix tree is, is almost 50-50. It's really quite sad, but for the maple tree, uh, I mean, you're, using, you, you're looking at the usual kind of log decay Right, it's it's. Uh, I think we had something like fifteen uh, non leaf, sixteen non leaf nodes, and and the rest were leaf nodes for for the example that we were playing with up there. Uh, and it would be even better, of course, if we were using um, better uh, leaf nodes. We we were simply using the leaf nodes we had because I mean that cost nothing in terms of development time. So yes. yeah, I expect it to be even better. And I guess the, the intermediate node is a trivial one where you basically just hit a single cache line whenever you go through that node, right? It's 256 two bytes with four cache lines, but... Two cache lines? Four. Four, sorry. 256 yeah, but bytes. W when you traverse it for a lookup, you need oh. to hit more than one. Uh, maybe three, because oh. we, 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 we search the array of indices and then we pluck the pointer out so, of the... So this is where you might want to have intermediate, intermediate nodes, which are more compact, because then you can do your lookup in the uh, uh, dense case by uh, hitting a single cache line per level. And you speed up your entire lookups. Maybe. We should, we should look at your code. Yeah, I, uh, Please do. I'll give you the pointer. Depends how many, how many uh, entries you have, right? But yeah. Yeah, but if you're sparse, you have few entries per per intermediate node. And if if you are uh, sorry, if you're uh, yeah, so so if you have few entries within a node and you have a compact representation, it fits in a cache line. If you get to a point where you have uh, enough, then you can use let's say, well, I mean, one entry per. Uh, 
so so it's a flat array, right? So you get the index based on your uh, part of the key, and and it's also a single uh, cache line entry lookup. So in, in almost yeah, actually, actually, in no case do you need to hit more than one or maybe two cache cache line, but I think one is 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 good for all the nodes. Okay. Uh, we, we have to talk, talk more about that of, uh, after yeah, the presentation. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is uh, you usually end up pulling in more than one cache line anyways because it gets prefetched. Sorry? You usually pull in more than one cache line anyways because of prefetch. But then you get more uh, traffic on your memory bus or uh, on your lower, lower level caches. So. What Leah means that the CPU fetches the uh, the second cache line anyway, even if you don't access it. So you might as well access it. So I guess uh, first it depends on the architecture. Second, uh, I mean, maybe it fetches the second, but I mean, if they need to hit four. We actually <laughs> had uh, node types that were just two and there was very little, there was no performance gain to going to, four, to leaving leaving it at two, it was better to have four. So okay. prefetching is pretty aggressive, it seems. So it would be good to look at though. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and, and just, just to add, you know, we, we, we are quibbling over tiny percentages compared to the absolute <laughs> awful behavior we currently have with the Radix tree. Oh, right. <laughs> There we go. And, and I can say that as a Radix tree maintainer, right? 147 kilobytes, come on, quarter of a kilobyte per PID. It's, we can do so much better than this. It's really bad, right? I don't know how, what you store your ints in, but uh, 576 bytes seems excessive. So how many kilobytes is the code, the implementation? The, <laughs> I, don't, I didn't look at that. Maybe uh, the the bit would compensate for it. So yeah, it yeah. For I don't know. Uh, yeah. Um, so uh, another idea was to use it for the page cache. Um, so because there's folios now, um, you can think of page cache as being ranges or singletons. Uh, you know, large folios being uh, being being ranges. Uh, but we'd have to add uh, search marks. Uh, search marks are pretty, um, wouldn't be too bad to add because we currently track gaps. And so we would basically replace uh, the gap section with, with search marks. Uh, and we would actually get an extra bit that we don't currently have. Uh, but we'd have to check the performances as always. They may not, we might need to look into that. Uh, should be fine though, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, so the marks basically would work the same way as the gaps. Uh, gaps right now propagate up the tree from the leaves all the way to the root. So as you search through, you don't have to uh, traverse the leaves, the doubly linked list or whatever you, you use today. Um, to find what have you um, based on the mark. Uh, but seeing as we have an extra one, we could potentially use it for shadow entry. And so we could use it for shadow entry trimming and we could tree compaction could potentially occur. Um, we'd, we'd probably use three node types for this with dense uh, allocation ranges and sparse nodes as well. Uh, so here is an example of uh, a large folio going into uh, the current Radix tree and what it would look like in a maple tree node. Uh, so it would be a single node in the maple tree. Uh, it's not the greatest way to represent a maple tree, but I wanted to keep the graphic pretty much the same for both. Uh, basically, we have the pivots up top and the, uh, the slots or entries down below. So uh, to store these, this range, 0, 1, 4, 15, and a, and a range of 512 to 1023. Um, the radix tree would allocate two nodes. The first one um, blown out here with four entries um, on, on the bottom. And the top is, uh, is the root node. 
And the way that the root node works in the rakes tree is that uh, uh, each one represents a, a particular range. In this case, uh, the first one, 0 to 63. Uh, but then once you get to 512, we have an entry of 512, and the range, uh, the pink there, is buddy entries, and the buddy entries loop back to the first. So you end up with a kind of like this weird uh, self-referencing node. Um, but it's, again, a pretty large amount of, of space to store, to store what it is. So I think we can also do a bit better here. Um, another idea was file descriptors, uh, but there's very large systems that just allocate like hundreds of thousands or millions of files, you know, when you're thinking of uh, cloud vendors or supercomputers, and they probably wouldn't be very happy if we started allocating copious amounts of memory every time they start something up. Uh, so that's probably not something, well, it's not something we're currently looking on at. Uh, there's also the possibility of file systems with extents. Uh, there's a few things that need to be looked at there, uh, adding 32-bit to 64. Um, but there's not many files right now that are bigger than 16 terabytes, so it's probably not that common of a, of a use case needing that. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a bunch of other node types that would need to be to be looked at, but we're already looking at this for maybe uh, speeding up what we're doing with it anyways. Um, yeah, because we're looking at something called compressing a node, uh, compressing an index. So basically what, what you're looking at is, uh, instead of just implying the start of the range from the parent, uh, the parent index, you would say, okay, well, we know this many, that this is the starting top bits of the index, and then you would add an offset. And that way we could uh, compress and get an even more dense node. Uh, kind, kind of sounds like the, the Judy tree, actually. <laughs> uh, so I think it would, it would benefit a lot of the other use cases if we were to do that uh, as well. So uh, that's basically all I have for this. Uh, is there any uh, questions or? Comments on that? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, just if you're looking for other potential use cases, uh, it might be worth looking at the regmap caches. We currently have an RB tree type. Um, these are uh, relatively small, and this is probably overkill, but you overkilling problems to make them a lot better than they uh, would otherwise be is kind of regmaps thing. Um, it's a uh, read mostly often sparse with large dense clusters of uh, values uh, map uh, where we store uh, a copy of all the register data on the device. Um, so yeah, that my, sounds like a pretty good fit. Um, yeah, it, it, it feels like a good fit. And if, uh, like it's probably not worth writing Maple Tree for it, but if you've written it, then um, I might get around to looking at it. But yeah, if you're looking for other use cases, that's one to consider, I think. Yeah, that's certainly something we could look at for sure. I, I often have conversations with people and they say, I don't need it. I have this thing that I use. And this, they start describing, yeah. you know, Radix tree, doubly linked list. Yeah, no, I mean, like, we're just using RB tree because it was a thing that existed at the time. Um, so, uh, yeah, it would, like I say, it wouldn't be worth writing it for RegMap, but if it's there, it sounds like a good bit, I think, from what I know so far. Yeah, in, in general, a lot of RB tree users can be converted to, to use the Maple tree. The only real exceptions are those which need to have overlapping ranges because we are simply a value to point a look up. There's, there's, there's one of those, oh, we've got these three ranges that overlap this value. We don't support that. That's, that's, that those people should still use the RB tree, but for but this should be more efficient for the, the ones that do, in fact, want value to single pointer lookups. Yeah, so I, I, there's probably a few other places. It's great to hear that some people have uh, uses 
the same sort of same sort of data sets, right? Um, have you considered a user space implementation of this, or do you know of anyone that has considered user space implementation? Uh, well, I test in user space, so it already compiles and runs in user space, the same code. Uh, so yeah, it, it could very easily become a library. All right. Anything from the chat? Nope. Nothing from the chat. All right, well, thanks, everyone. Great.